Well, good morning. I'm Pete DeJerry, and this is The Take on a Friday. It's a casual Friday, yes, because NFL Draft started last night. First round, we got through that. We'll touch on that a little bit later. But yesterday, starting off the day, the markets were very strong, and you're moving to the upside, and we're talking about oil, we're talking about Chevron, we're talking about Exxon. All of that, markets were up about 400 points, pushing towards 24,000. But just after noon Eastern time, we got some news under the markets about Gilead, and that news really pushed the markets down in a hurry. And that the news was the disappointing first trial. So Gilead, which had been trading about $83 a share, trading up, it was in the green, looked pretty good, now pushed all the way back down towards 75 Actually closing out the day a little bit closer to 78 so a little bit of a recovery, but still well off that 83 level. So some very big disappointment there. Well, that disappointment... That was part of what was built into that strength side of things was, hey, maybe Gilead does have something. Well, unfortunately, because of this disappointing news, it started to drag everything down. When you look over at some of the big names that were that, that literally made a pretty violent move to the downside in a very rapid pace. It was Apple. It was American Express. A lot of the financials, Goldman Sachs, J.P. Morgan, McDonald's, Microsoft, a lot of these names took a step down because of the fact that the excitement that was building into the marketplace now had been removed a little bit, at least for now. And we'll see if that actually starts to pick up once again. But yeah, Chevron, Exxon, and oil, that was a big story. The other big story really was Las Vegas Sands. And we talked about this yesterday, but Sheldon Adelson talking about the strength and the rapid recoveries that you can see in different markets, not here necessarily, but Macau and how fast that really could return. Those names really did hold on to their gains and probably based upon a lot of the commentary that came from Sheldon Adelson. So you could see that Vegas Sands, Wynn, those big names certainly were influenced. Those that have that exposure to the Asian market certainly had a nice strong day. And that was something a little bit different than we'd seen in a while. So that that held in there, though. That did not get pushed down along with that Gilead news, not to the same extent this morning. The markets actually were up, not huge, but up, call it 100 points. And then that was given back really pretty rapidly as well. So here we are right now. We're about 90 minutes into the trading day. Quick update. We're down about 30 points. I'm looking at what's really been powering the market to the upside. Well, energy, again, was part of what was moving to the markets to the upside. But kind of a hidden area that I don't see a lot of folks talking about necessarily, but retail and Target, McDonald's, Lowe's, Best Buy, Costco, Home Depot, you kind of get the idea. All in the green, all looking pretty decent, pretty many, maybe even a little bit better than pretty decent. Airlines, not so much. They weren't looking very well. And you looked at some of the earnings reports, not not huge movers anywhere. Intel looked like they put up some pretty good numbers, but actually that name moving to the downside a little bit. Now, when we talked about Monday and we talked about some of the unusual option activity there, we did say this wasn't necessarily an earnings play. It was a play on where the stock was at that time, 59, and where it might go to in terms of the upside calls and buying that time. That was the one example we used where it wasn't going to expire today on the 24th. It wasn't looking for an expiration on May 1st. The options that we were seeing out there in Marvell and Intel, those were going out to June and August. So there is a little bit more time. We'll see if those options do react because there was some very large buying in both of those names. And that was going back to Monday. But we did see the volume slip back a little bit as well. So we talked about the first couple of weeks and some of the volumes as they had sifted back down a little bit. Then we talked about, well, but we had about five or six trading days where we were averaging about 28 million a day. Well, the last couple of days, now we've slipped back down once again, around 24 million per day average if you look back to Thursday and then going back to Wednesday as well. So we'll see, will we see this same theme? And we are seeing a, what feels like a much lighter activity today on this Friday. Maybe it's people just catching their breath. You never really know uh, what's really going to be pushing if those volumes come flying into the later part of the day. But as of right now, it looks like fairly weak volume in my opinion. So we'll see how that plays out. Now, there's a lot of different uh, of parts of what's going on in the market that are shifting volatilities around and so forth. We talk about the VIX, how it's been trading sort of call it between 41 and 44. That seems to be a resting spot. Now we've been as low as 37 been as high as uh, 60 over uh, this month. But so where are we right now? And 
if we look at it right now, we're looking at around a 39 volatility and it's it seems to want to be holding in there. So despite the fact that the markets are moving down, I'm looking at the volatility also moving down. Now it is a Friday and sometimes when I used to be a market maker on the trading floor, you start to move the dial a little bit. You start to crank up a little in terms of I'm pricing my options on this afternoon, not now. I'm pricing my options later in the day on Saturday's date, then on Sunday's date. And as I get closer to the end of the day, I might start pricing my options out there all the way to Monday. And as you go through that process, it looks like the volatility is coming down a little bit. It's actually a function of the time as you're adjusting some of those implied volatilities of the options. So it's something that we used to do just so you wouldn't be buying too high of a premium relative to what Monday is going to be as you're trading on a Friday. So that's something to always keep in the back of your mind. Uh, in terms of unusual activity, which we always love to give you guys, I'm looking at Boeing. Now, Boeing quietly, we it hasn't been talked about nearly as much as other areas of the marketplace. It had been when Boeing took that huge dive and got all the way down to 89. Shoot, we were talking about Boeing on a daily basis. Everybody was talking about the industrials, what was going on, how's Boeing doing, all the airlines and all the rest of it. Now, I mentioned at the very top, Airlines were in the red today fairly early and not trading great out of the gate, even when the markets were up a little bit. And now we're down almost 100 points. We're moving very rapidly to the downside from where we were when we started this. But we're seeing today some put buying in Boeing. And I think it's worth noting because it's not gigantic, but buying about 3,000 of next Friday is expiring the 120 puts for about $3. Now that's with Boeing trading about $134. So it would have to make a pretty sharp move to the downside. It's only got a week for this to happen, but we know how Boeing can trade. This is a stock that can move in chunks, and we will see if this plays out. Could even be somebody just buying some protection, guys. We You, you never know. Puts are a much more difficult thing to analyze than calls, but I just highlight that because it is a quieter day. We aren't seeing nearly as much activity, and that one did really stand out for me as of now, about 80, 90 minutes into the trading session. So... I mentioned the draft. Let me put on my Buccaneer hat. So I got I got a lot of people who will ask me questions all the time on Twitter, and I'm happy to answer them. Some people are very kind. Some people are very nice. Some people are not so nice. Sometimes they're very rude, quite frankly. But they love to ask questions. So I like to try to answer as many as I can. I do that as much as I can there. We're on the blog all the time here at Marker Rebellion. I will tell you this about the draft. Draft's really, really exciting. A lot of people say, hey, Pete, yesterday you were wearing Raider stuff. Today you are wearing Buck." Guys, I, I've lived in or played for so many different teams that it's kind of crazy. But I definitely have some teams that I have a very close uh, relationship with. The Buccaneers are one of those teams. I was great friends with the owner back in the day, Hugh Culverhouse. Different owners now, of course. But I played there in the late 80s. Uh, and I've had stops at the Vikings and Sacramento Sur. You name it. I, I played a lot of different places. Seattle, I played up in Toronto. So what? What? this is so fun because other than the Super Bowl, I think the draft is one of the more interesting days of the year and it gives fans excitement and hope. And we, and we're in a, we're in a situation now where everybody's grasping for hope. Well, one of the things we get, we get to talk about something somewhat live in the sports world. We're not watching the 84 game. We're not watching the 92 game. We're not watching this. We actually got to watch this through zoom or how, however they were putting that out last night and be able to watch the draft almost as well as we normally would be able to. And it was a lot of fun, I thought, to watch the first round. Life-changing for some of these young men. Absolutely, right? I mean, and that's part of the excitement too. And as fans of various teams, you got to be excited. As a Raiders fan, I got to tell you something. They went for speed and they got it. They got the Two of the fastest guys in the entire NFL draft when they drafted a receiver and a defensive back. I think that's going to be something great for the Las Vegas Raiders. And then you look across and you look at other teams. I think one of the more interesting uh, uh, drafts was the Green Bay Packers. The fact that they went for Jordan Love from Utah State, I found that really interesting because it's kind of a twist on things, right? I mean, because if you go back in time, if you're a football fan at all, you go back in time a little bit, you're going to see where Aaron Rodgers got drafted by the Green Bay Packers. Brett Favre was not happy about this. He was not happy about this at all. They weren't friends. They did not get along. You could see the animosity. There was anger oftentimes on the sidelines. Just did not like it. Did not like it. Brett Favre was very disappointed. He was this veteran. He's an all-pro. He's a historic quarterback. All those wonderful things. 
And now he's looking behind him because he's got Aaron Rodgers that they draft really late, but in the first round. Wasn't happy about that. Well, late in the rounds, pick 26 out of 32. They take Jordan Love out of Utah State. Big, athletic, very quality quarterback. Does throw a lot of interceptions last year, but quality quarterback. And you wonder, is Aaron Rodgers going to be able to accept this? So you really do wonder. I wonder about this because everybody's got an ego. <laughs> no matter what everybody says, everybody's got an ego. And how is he going to deal with this? Did he learn from how Brett treated him and is he going to do the same thing or did he learn from that experience and try to be a little bit more helpful? Who knows? We'll see how that pans out there. So there's a lot of very interesting things early on. The New York giants took a tackle that nobody expected. You guys probably don't dig deep in enough to know all the different varieties of tackles and all this kind of thing, but it was a surprise pick. So that stood out for me. My Minnesota Vikings did a great job. They did exactly what they needed. They did what the Raiders did. They got speed, they got talent, and they got a receiver, and they got a cornerback. Very aggressive cornerback. They got speed at wide receiver. Needed to replace Stephon Diggs. So that was pretty interesting as well. My Tampa Bay Buccaneers, they got really lucky because the tackle that was supposedly, at least reportedly, to be one of the first two tackles to go, this guy Tristan Wirtz, out of Iowa, and I'm a Minnesota guy, but out of Iowa, got to love this kid anyway. He's got a wrestling background. Oh, he only goes about 6'6", 320. And who do they have at quarterback? Oh, that's right. The Buccaneers have Mr. Tom Brady down there. They got Rob Gronkowski. They want to protect this franchise. And now they've got themselves a left tackle that they can put in there right now, who's a guy that we call in the NFL a mauler. Because when you've got a wrestling background, you got that kind of size, and this kid can run. He's got athletic, athletic ability beyond it's going to be really, really exciting to watch this. And I think the, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers are going to be a fun team to watch in 2020. And let's hope like heck we got a season. That's what we're all hoping for. So a lot of fun things in the draft last night. I, th I thought a lot of teams did very, very well. Some teams probably reached. Everybody always does a little bit of that. But a lot of fun. We got more of that. And tune in later on. Uh, my wife and I, we got this thing every Friday. We've been doing this throughout this whole pandemic. Every Friday, special night. Can you guess what tonight's going to be? What are we going to be serving up at the Nigerian household? Last week, Southern Soul Food. It was pretty daggone good. Have a great day, guys. Educate yourself. Understand options. If you can understand them, you have a much better chance to have success along the way. Take care.